What's up guys? So we all know that the Model 3 is jam-packed full of cool features, but for a lot of people many of these features can go by unnoticed and slip under the radar. So in today's video I'm going to take you through the top 10 cool tips and features I found hidden deep within the Model 3 user manual. So let's get started. So the first thing to note about the Model 3 is that it actually doesn't come with any user manual in the glove box as you might find in a traditional car. Instead, if you look for one, all you'll find is an emergency roadside assistance booklet which provides some important information about towing the Model 3 in the event of an accident, along with some other safety information which we'll speak about later. So where can you go to find all the in-depth technical information about the Model 3? Well, you have two options. Option one is the center touchscreen, where you can find a virtual user manual by tapping on the settings icon, then service, and then tapping on the owner's manual. Option two is via Tesla's website. If you log into your Tesla account, select your vehicle, and then tap on the glove box, you'll find a PDF link to the user manual, which you can access on the go. Now, while the lack of a physical user manual might sound a bit awkward at first, once you start to use the virtual version, you'll quickly start to see the benefits, including the ability to quickly browse through relevant sections with a simple scroll or tap, the advantage of being able to instantly search for particular topics using the built-in search bar, and the ability to view helpful animations which intuitively describe complex features and actions without having to read through reams of documentation. Right, so now that we've covered the user manual, let's dive into our top 10 list. First up is Autopilot. Usually most of us would only ever think to engage Autopilot when we're on the motorway or dual carriageway. But one big use case for Autopilot is actually in stop and go traffic. To emphasize this, Tesla actually added the ability to engage Autopilot even when the vehicle is stationary. All you need to do is flick down twice on the gear selector and as long as there is another vehicle in front, autopilot will engage, leaving you to sit back and relax while the system automatically handles boring stop and go traffic with ease. Next up is the emergency call or e-call feature. Now, while most of us would know that the e-call system automatically contacts the emergency services in the event of a severe collision, it does actually have some additional features which I was quite surprised to see. In addition to calling the emergency services, the system also communicates other valuable information such as vehicle type, identification number and GPS location so first responders can get to you as quickly as possible. The car even detects the number of passengers in the vehicle using the built-in occupancy sensors in the front and rear seats and sends this information to the emergency services to ensure that they're best equipped to help everyone involved. Number three are the doors. In some of my previous videos, I've described how the Model 3 uses buttons instead of traditional handles to open and close the doors. However, an interesting side effect of this is that the door opening mechanism is electronically rather than mechanically actuated. This means that while you're driving, the door open buttons become completely non-functional since the electronic actuators are powered off. This means that the only way to open the doors while you're driving is to use the emergency release latch on the driver or passenger side doors. However, since the rear doors do not come equipped with such a latch, it's physically impossible to open them while the car is in motion. This should come as good news to any parents, since even without a child lock, it's physically impossible to open the rear doors while the car is in motion. However, it does raise some questions in the event of an accident or power loss to the vehicle, since then any rear passengers will need to crawl into the front seats in order to exit the car through the front doors. Number four is the parking brake. While the Model 3 uses an electronic parking brake system, it does not apply the brakes to all four wheels. Instead, the parking brake only supplies braking force to the two rear wheels, and it works completely independently of the hydraulic braking system, which is powered through the brake pedal. As a result, there may be certain circumstances in which the parking brake alone mightn't be able to provide enough traction to hold the car in position. Added to this is the fact that since there's no engine or transmission, it's not possible to leave the car in gear should the brakes not be able to provide enough traction. In such circumstances, the Model 3 will use its built-in accelerometer sensors to determine if a slope is too steep for the parking brakes to handle. And in such cases, it will present a warning on screen to alert you that you should move the car to a different position. Number five are the quick access cards. 
Towards the bottom right of the touchscreen, you'll find an interesting little section known as the Quick Access Cards area. If you swipe left on the cards area, you'll see a visual display of your current tyre pressures, and if you swipe right, you'll be presented with a list of driving statistics. However, if you scroll down, you'll also notice some additional trip information, which can provide a more insightful view of your average energy consumption. In my case, you can actually see my average energy consumption as calculated over the nearly 9,000 kilometres driven since I took delivery of the car back in January. This type of information can be very useful when planning long journeys, since it provides much more accurate energy consumption and driving range estimates when compared with the data produced from the Energy app, which only uses data from the last 50 kilometres worth of driving. Number six are the climate controls. One interesting thing about having an electric car is that when you exit the vehicle, you can leave the climate controls on without worrying about leaving an engine idling with toxic fumes or wearing out your 12 volt battery. In this regard, most people have probably heard about dog mode and camp mode, which lets you maintain a specific cabin temperature while pets or other animals are left inside the car. However, one downside to both of these modes is that the car alarm systems such as sentry mode, tilt and intrusion sensors are all disabled to prevent the motion from anyone inside setting off the alarm. However, if for example you wanted to leave your shopping in the car while you go out and do a few jobs, but you don't want your ice cream to melt in the hot cabin, then there is another feature simply known as ON, which enables the security sensors like sentry mode to remain active while the cabin temperature is maintained at a suitable level until you return. Number seven is related to using the Model 3 in cold and icy conditions. Here in Ireland, we do tend to get quite a lot of cold and icy weather in the winter time, and in such circumstances, you might find it difficult to get into your Model 3. Since the Model 3's door handles sit flush with the body, and since they're manually rather than electronically actuated, if ice builds up on the outside of the handle, it can actually prevent you from being able to open the door. To deal with this, Tesla have two recommendations. The first is a preventative measure, which suggests applying some WD-40 to the handle pivot pin to prevent ice buildup around the handle so you can access it more easily. The second is a reactive measure, which describes how you can remove ice from around the handle if it becomes frozen shut. Interestingly, this is probably the only time where I've seen a manufacturer actually recommend hitting your car to solve a problem, but here we go. The suggestion is that if you use the base of your fist to hit around the door handle in a circular fashion, the ice will eventually loosen enough for you to be able to push the rear of the handle and open the door. However, if this was me, I think I'd prefer just pouring some lukewarm water over the handle to melt the ice rather than going around and punching my 70 grand car. Number eight is another autopilot tip, or rather a collection of smaller tips. The first is related to auto steer. Although the autopilot cameras can detect and show obstacles like traffic cones, cyclists and pedestrians on the driver information display, auto steer will not react to them. This means that if you're driving on autopilot and you're expecting the car to automatically manoeuvre around obstacles that it shows on the driver information display, then don't because the car will either just stop or drive straight into them. In the case of the detection of cyclists or pedestrians, the car will slow down, but in order to manoeuvre around them, you'll have to manually regain control. The second tip relates to autopilot speed detection. Unlike a lot of other cars on the market today, Teslas are actually incapable of reading speed limit signs to detect the correct speed limit. Instead, they are entirely reliant on GPS data, which is often inaccurate and unreliable. As a result, this also has the added side effect of impacting autopilot. Say, for example, you're driving on a road with a 100 km an hour speed limit that's directly adjacent to another road with a slower speed limit. In such cases, the GPS data can sometimes conflate the two roads, resulting in autopilot switching to the slower speed limit and causing it to suddenly brake. So this is something to be aware of. Number nine relates to breakdowns. Unlike a lot of traditional vehicles, the Model 3 cannot be towed with any of its four wheels on the ground. This is because when in motion, the electric motors act as generators, which can also create a significant amount of heat and potentially result in fire if the vehicle is towed for any significant distance. As such, the only way you can safely transport the Model 3 in the event of an accident or breakdown is either on the back of a flatbed truck or by using dolly wheels to keep the wheels elevated and stationary while the car is in motion. 
Keeping with the topic of breakdowns, if you need to get in touch with Tesla roadside assistance for any reason, then you can simply tap on the Tesla logo at the top of the touch screen and the number of the local roadside assistance is shown at the bottom right of the screen that appears. Finally, our last tip of the day relates to cleaning the Model 3. And in this regard, Tesla have a number of recommendations. Due to the number of highly sensitive electronic components on the outside of the vehicle, such as the autopilot and ultrasonic sensors, Tesla do not recommend using automatic car washes since these may inadvertently damage the sensors outside of the warranty. Similarly, if you're using a power washer, Tesla recommend keeping the nozzle at a minimum distance of 30 centimeters away from the bodywork and to not directly point the power washer at any of the sensitive components like the ultrasonic or autopilot camera sensors. When it comes to removing stubborn dirt like dead insects and tar spots, Tesla recommend using denatured alcohol to loosen and break down the dirt, followed by a swift rinse with lukewarm water and some non-detergent soap. Inside the car, Tesla recommends simply using a microfiber cloth coupled with some lukewarm water to clean the seats and upholstery. To clean the more shiny surfaces like the centre touchscreen and the centre console, Tesla recommend using the lint-free cloth that they provide by default in the glove box, as this results in an anti-static charge that prevents the build-up of dust or any other particles on the centre console. Finally, just before I finish up, I have one final honourable mention, and that is that the car is able to support up to 19 different keys, either through the smartphone app or through a linked key card, and up to four different key fobs. I thought this was pretty amazing, although for most of us we probably struggle sharing the car with only one other person, let alone 19. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found it useful and informative. And as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, do let me know in the comments. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.